Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And this week I've been doing a lot of testing with LPI and what it can do to save you time. Stay tuned. Okay, so when you're using the laser, you've tested, you've done lots of material testing, and you're using various speeds and various powers, and you're looking for that exact amount of engraving burn that you're looking for to, for your desired result. And sometimes you have to sacrifice uh, time to get the result you want. It takes longer because to get that really dark char, sometimes it's just a, actually a lower speed and a lower power to generate the desired result. Well, I got to thinking, when I was playing with bamboo previously, bamboo engraves very uneven and gives very, um, for me, less than desirable results. And it's because it's a grass that burns unevenly and it just, I, I, I don't like engraving bamboo. But to get the most uniform result with bamboo, <clears throat> I started pre-focusing the laser. And by pre-focusing, I mean I'm raising the focus. It's, it's higher. The laser module is pre the optimal focal point, pre-focused, raised it. And what does that do? Well, what that does is it enlarges your spot size. And by enlarging your spot size, the laser is making more passes over the same area. So it's doing like a double and triple burn depending on you know what your settings are. And it gives a whole lot more uniform result on bamboo. So that got, I was thinking about that and that got me to think and I said, okay, well, changing the focus, you're increasing your spot size. Uh, and you're creating all this overlap. Well, do you really need to use a 0 0.08 or 0 0.1 line interval when you're engraving wood? And and often often more than often than not, I'm using a 0 0.1. Sometimes I'll, if I'm really looking for really small detail, I'll do the 10 watt and the 0 0.08. But on some of the more elaborate designs and more engraving, it just takes forever with a 10 watt diode. And I'm constantly looking for ways to save time. So I got to thinking about the other line setting besides, or the other setting in the layers other than just speed and power. I've been playing with flood fill. We got flood fill figured out. And if you haven't seen that video, you need to watch it. Flood fill can be very, very productive, especially doing framings. Uh, but there are some tricks about how to use flood fill efficiently, and it's I got it completely broke down. Well, I now have a pretty good handle on LPIs or line intervals. And there's a line interval test in Lightburn but it's not a real good one. Uh, they didn't spend a whole lot of time developing that line interval test, unlike the material test. The material test is in depth. You get a lot of information, a lot of choices, a lot of things to do with. Well, I'd like to see the same thing with the line interval test. So I created my own in Lightburn. Lightburn is a wonderful tool and it has the ability in Lightburn to create your own material test and control the intervals of it. So that's what I did for an interval test. I have gone in, in fact, uh, like I said, this week has been nothing but test, test, test. And some of these were, you know, <laughs> they lengthy tests. In fact, I, I threw two of them away. I got two of them over there in the pile because it's just like, eh, not, not, not at all. But this is three tests from Lightburn's interval test. The light burn interval test will only do five squares and you're limited on what you can control and do. And, and, and 
Do you have any idea what that is? If you're a light burn programmer and you've done this and you know what you're looking at, oh yeah, I know what that is. But you know, six weeks from now, if you pick it up, you say, well, yeah, I can see that tells me the line interval, but what speeds, powers, all, none of that information, what laser, I don't, nothing's there. It's, it's useless. So I created my own and I've shared this file with my patrons and it's very much like the grids you see when you do the material test, but this is for your line intervals. And as you can see, it's got a pretty good gradient where I focused on the, the test that I did. This was the one I kept, uh, like I said, I threw two of them away. But here I've got, this is my power settings down here, eight, and I'm using, it tells you, I even got up here, what what machine I'm using, it's the Roly XW with the 10 watt module, and then there's my speed, 800 millimeters a minute, and all of these have the same speed. The variable is the line interval, or the LPI, the line interval, and the power. So 8% power, 10%, 12%, 14%, and 16% power on a 10 watt module. And then I've got a, a line interval of a 0 0.1, a 0 0.14, 0 0.18, 0 0.22, and a 0.26. And you can see there that it starts to lose its engraving ability there. So that was about as high as I wanted to go with my line interval with that power settings. And I, I've already, just from testing and experience, the low speed and the low power is where I get my darkest engravings. So the 800 millimeters a minute is kind of what I'm like, okay, and I can continue testing more, uh, but this this a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of time. And I'm really happy with the results on this and you're gonna see why in a second. So looking at this grid, I'm, I was, you know, that's pretty good at 12% power and a 0 0.10 line interval. But look how closely that resembles that. There's not a whole lot of difference there. And even in person looking at it, it looks really, really good. But it's went from a 0.1 line interval to a 0.26, almost three times difference between one and the other. And what does that mean, line interval? Is how many lines there are, and, and you see it in Lightburn is referred to as LPI or line interval. LP is lines per inch. Line interval is millimeters. All right, and that's what I've got depicted here is 0.1 millimeter, 0.14 millimeter. Uh, and so the, the smaller the number, the more lines there are in here. So there's almost a third less lines in of engraving on this line up here, that row, as there is on the very bottom down there. <clears throat> I played with it on a couple of different other things. And I mentioned the pre-focusing of the laser. I also tried that too to see, and it makes a big difference because I ran the same test. In fact, <clears throat> To give you an idea of why why the pre-focusing or an example of the pre-focusing working here's the one i just showed you that's focused with this those power and speed settings and you see the, the beginning of fading away up there at the 0.26 all right this one is the same powers and line intervals the only difference between this one and this one is this one is pre-focused i raised the laser two millimeters and ran the same test and got that result. And you can see it's much more uniform. The engraving, you know, all the way up, it looks good and a nice, you know, complete grid all the way on all of them. So raising the focus has its advantages. And if you're doing one image uh, on or one layer, and you're not having to do multiple layers and multiple scan angles, whatever. It's just a clean, simple image. 
then yeah, you might consider uh, because by raising and what this illustrates is is by raising the focus since that one is com well, I'm sorry that one is completely filled and it wasn't when it was completely focused and it is here raising the focus I could actually push the limit a little more and continue to decrease or the, the number of lines or increase the interval the line interval and and get as good a result as I was getting with even fewer lines now you'll have to do this with all your different material types I would even change if you changed vendors I would run a, a, a line interval test because I learned this week also that not all Baltic birch three millimeter material is created equally my premium Baltic birch that I get I've got perfect settings dialed in and even when I get in a new box they almost work every time without question I got in some uh, three millimeter Baltic birch much larger than the 300 by 300 I got the uh, uh, Glowforge ready Baltic birch and my settings will not touch it it was hard to engrave it wouldn't cut with the 10 watt laser no matter what I did no matter how many passes I gave it it didn't want to cut I had to turn on the 30 watt module to get it to cut so all materials even though one, they're both three millimeter Baltic birch they're not created equal so when you change from one vendor to a next you're gonna to want to check your settings and check your do your test and find your 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 ideal settings for your laser that's why I like sticking with it. if I got a good product stick with it no need to deviate it works you know it works if you're constantly jumping around and looking for the cheapest thing and the best buy who's got something on sale this week and you can't figure out why it works this week and it don't work this week you're constantly chasing your settings well you need to have uniformity in in your materials and that way you can have uniformity very close to uniformity in your power and speed settings but if you're going to do multiple layers back to the pre-focusing if you're going to have multiple layers in your design and some of them are going to require a different LPI which you can do you can have multiple LPIs on different layers but the problem with pre-focusing is if part of the image needs to be pre-focused but part of it doesn't well now you got to stop and change focus through your job you burn all your layers on one focus level then burn the layers on the pre -focus. well now you're spending time changing things up and the whole idea here is to save time so since I wasn't seeing a huge difference in time savings on the test that I've done to date, I kind of put the pre-focusing on the back burner and focused on staying at the optimal focal point and how much can I do with the, how much, what, how successful can my engraving be with the fewest number of lines? And so I did, I did a couple of tests uh, and as, and go back to, real quick to show you the pre-focus versus the focus here is uh, an engraving I did it's line intervals of 0 0.08 800 millimeters a minute 8 percent power 10 watt on the XW uh, the Roly XW and I said 90 degree scan angle but actually it's a zero degree scan angle one pass with air and this is in focus and it was 19 minutes and 47 seconds and you can see there's a little overburn going on because I haven't cleaned this up yet. I would normally sand that up and clean it up real good. But this is straight off the laser at 19 minutes and 47 seconds. This one, a line interval of a 0.2. So there again, I've doubled, or, or it's half the number of lines. Uh, 0.2. 800 millimeters a second 12 percent power 10 watts zero degree not 90 zero degree scan angle one pass this one was pre-focused I did raise it two millimeters but look at the time I cut my time in half and this too is straight off the laser and it doesn't have any of the overburn going on it looks good that right there is ready to finish and the reason for the increase in power is I've because I did pre-focus it 
I bumped the power up so I could make sure I had a, a, as good a, of as dark of a graving as I wanted. So there's an example right there, you know, half the time with half the lines, which makes sense. And the result is that is a really good result. But let's look at an, an image, not just text, but an image. Because what is that going to do to the quality of our image? Well, let's see here. This is an image I did on the Roly XW, 10 watt, 800 millimeters a minute, 10% power with a 0.1 LPI or a 0.1 line interval. <clears throat> and it looks good. It's nice. It's dark. It's really crisp. And I'm really happy with that result. But look at the time up there. It's 33 minutes and 12 seconds. 33 minutes. And this is only a four inch square. And it's 33 minutes and 12 seconds for that engraving. This one, same laser, same 10 watt module, same speed, 800 millimeters a second, or 800 millimeters a minute. This one, again, I bumped the power to 16% from 10%, but it's a 0.26 line interval, straight off the laser, no cleaning, and it was very, very clean, and it was 12 minutes and 48 seconds. And a side-by-side -side comparison. For a job that's going to be something that is going to be quick, simple, cheap, inexpensive, and I'm not going to be trying to get top dollar out of it, that I can do two of these, and the time I can do one of these, I'm going to do this all day long. So I'm going to be discussing this uh, Saturday, answering any questions, and go in depth with you know, the the stream, uh, the viewers, and the Saturday's live stream. So hopefully you guys can tune in uh, this Saturday. Uh, where, where? Here it is. Uh, let's see here. Schedule. Uh, let's see calendar. Today is July the 17th, so this will be July the 19th, be 9 p.m. Eastern Time, and for an in-depth conversation uh, about all these tests and examples and um, see what the peanut gallery has to say and get any feedback from those who've learned other neat tips and tricks. So hope you, hopefully you can make it, and I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I look forward to seeing you then in Saturday's live stream. 9 p.m. Eastern Time, July the 19th. Until then, I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm out.